afternoon, sir. Before we do anything further, I want to advise you of your constitutional rights. You have the right to remain silent concerning these charges, and your statement should make the contention of use against you in court. You have the right to plead not guilty of any charge and let the trial in front of a judge or a jury. You have the right to stop answering questions at any time if you're interrogated, to have an attorney present with you during questioning. You have the right to a public and a speedy trial. At the trial, you may confront and cross examine the witnesses against you, summon the witnesses by way of subpoena, testify on your own behalf, and offer any defense you may have. In any criminal trial, it's the state's burden to prove you guilty beyond all reasonable doubt. You are entitled to be represented by counsel. I know you have counsel here today to make a bond argument on your behalf. As a person held in custody, you are entitled to be given a bail set by the court. If you're not an American citizen, you should understand that conviction for these offenses could carry the possibility of deportation, exclusion from admission to the United States, or denial of naturalization pursuant to the laws of the United States. If you have any questions about your constitutional rights, please bring them up at this time to speak with counsel. I know you are a member of the bar, sir. Do you understand your constitutional rights? I do, sir. All right, thank you. Bail commission? Yes, good afternoon. I believe the bond is set by the court. $2 million is appropriate if the defendant makes that bond. I'd ask the GPS be a condition of his release with house arrest only leaving for things the court deems appropriate. While you could argue that the other two co-defendants cooperated with the state police when they were trying to serve these warrants that started out being secret but somehow got out and people knew about it. So Ms. Brewetti, knowing about this warrant, did evade the state police for a substantial period of time yesterday. He was actually found up by the mass border. We knew that he was at his lawyer's office. We went there. Didn't find him there. He apparently just left, but they didn't know where he was going. So we had to use technology to find him. So it is not a situation where he cooperated knowing this warrant was there since it was all over the news before we got there. So I believe the $2 million is set by the court with those conditions I requested is appropriate. Thank you, counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm requesting the court set a $500,000 bond, keeping in mind all of the conditions that I'm sure that the court is going to impose for a number of reasons. And first we start with the facts that are typical in an argument like this. He's a lifelong resident of the state, as the bail commissioner indicated. He's a coach for a number of years, and he's been well established in that community. He has substantial ties to the state. Then we add the fact of his law practice. He's a sole practitioner. He's been doing immigration law for the past 20 years and been practicing as an attorney in good standing for the past 30. Never convicted of any crimes. He does have pending cases in Hartford. We represent him there. He has made every single court appearance. He has turned himself in when he needed to, and there's never been any issues there. I also have some concerns. I don't believe that Mr. Mwenye has the financial resources that perhaps, without knowing more, that some of his co-defendants may have. Obviously, the kiddies' cases has taken a hit on the practice. So I think that financial amount with the conditions that I think the court is going to impose would do that. And also, very briefly, you look at the warrant. I struggle to find the case the state will eventually prove here to show an agreement, to show a conspiracy. And I don't think it's a strong case against Mr. Mwenye. And for those reasons, Your Honor, I do request that bond, keeping in mind, again, he's a sole practitioner who will hopefully be able to continue to service his clients in the courthouses throughout the state while the case is pending and earn a living. Thank you. Is it true that one of your client's pending charges involves a violation of a court order? Yes, it does, Your Honor. It involves a violation of the Immigration and Nationality Act. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, counsel. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Um, do not leave the state of Connecticut without permission, surrender any passport. The exceptions to the house arrest would be medical appointments, church services, and meetings with counsel in defense of these charges. Uh, that is the court's finding. Uh, transfer to party, Your Honor, for uh, February 20th. Your Honor, if I may, um, any issues regarding going to work, that was not in the court's Appearance in court, the amount of the bond must also match the gravity of the defense charge. And so I'm going to think, I think the bond is appropriate with $2 million. So that is the court's order. Thank you. February 20th for further proceedings. Thank you. Take care. So you need to take steps to hire counsel. They're only here today to argue your bond. If you cannot afford an attorney, I will consider an application for a public defender, but we'll do that on a case by case basis with an accurate financial affidavit. February 20th. 220 in part A, please. So we'll do. Thank you. The next matter, Your Honor, is on line eight on the arraignment docket, Michelle Traconis. Good Your Honor, Andrew Bowen. Matthew Johnson. For the state, Your Honor. Yeah, Andrew. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. I know we have met before, and I know you've previously been advised of your legal rights, but due to the nature and circumstances of the new charges, I'm going to re advise you. You do have the right to remain silent concerning these charges, and these statements may potentially be used against you in court. You have the right to stop answering questions at any time and have an attorney present with you during questioning. You have the right, right to plead not guilty to these charges and elect a trial in front of a judge or a jury. You have the right to a public and speedy trial. And at a trial, you may confront and cross examine the witnesses against you, summon witnesses, testify on your own behalf, and offer any. You are entitled to be represented by counsel. Is this a full appearance at your moment? Yes. No. Okay. If you do have counsel in the counsel, um, if you have any questions about your constitutional rights, you should bring them up um, at this time or speak to your lawyer. You should also be advised in the event you're not an American citizen that conviction for this offense could carry consequences of deportation, excluded from admission in the United States, or denial of naturalization, all pursuant to uh, federal immigration law. As a person held in custody, you are entitled to reasonable bail set by the court. You're currently on GPS monitoring through the state, and I do know you have to remain compliant with that monitoring. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Bail Commissioner. What else can you tell me? The defendant is 45 years old. She lived in Connecticut for two years and six months. She reports that she is supported by her family and she has 15 years of education. She does have the two pending matters out of this court um, that come back January 31st. Uh, the first matter is for tampering with evidence. She posted a $100,000 surety bond. The second matter is for tampering with physical evidence and hindering prosecution first. She posted a $500,000 $500, surety bond. She has no convictions on her record. I would recommend a $1 million bond with a condition of FBS and UPS that she do not leave the state of Connecticut without permission, that she have no contact with the victim's family, the co-defendant, and or his relatives and friends. State. Judge, in looking at this matter, I believe the bond is set by the court at $2 million is appropriate. If the defendant is to make that bond, I'd ask that you do the GPS IPS with house arrest um, only to leave for things that the court deems appropriate with that no contact with co-defendants or um, Mr. Dulos's family. Your Honor, I have, I have filed a motion for reduction of bond. Yes, you may be heard. And I would ask that the court set the bond at 500000 That would be a total of $1.1 million. She has never failed to make an appearance. Disappearance of Jennifer Dulos, I would ask the court to set the bond at five hundred thousand dollars. Well, the defendant has been compliant with her conditions of release. 
the warrants indicate some level of cooperation with the authorities. I will, and she, she has been compliant, as I said. There's been no GPS changes. She continues to charge the device appropriately. No issues according to the Office of Adult Probation. Therefore, the court will set bond at $1.5 million for the defendant with the condition of house arrest. Um, the only exception will be for medical appointments, church services, and meetings with defense counsel. No contact with the co-defendant. She already is on that. So that will we need to reorder, Judge. When she, when she came into uh, corrections, they cut off any GPS monitor. Okay, well, that has to be reinstalled. And thank you for letting me know that. So it's a new bracelet, but with the more restrictive parameters. IPS GPS. Judge Council and I discussed February 7th in Part A for her next court date. I'd ask Your Honor to order her other case uh, continued from the 31st to the 7th also, please. Right, these are proceedings. So is that the agreement, Counsel? Yes, Your Honor. So ordered. So ordered. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> next, Your Honor, line three in the agreement document, Fotis Dulos. Richard Colangelo for the state. Good morning, Judge Norm Pettis, um, Kevin Smith, and Chris Latonica for Mr. Dulos. These are full appearances for all of us. Good morning. Yes, afternoon, actually. Good afternoon, sir. I know you've already been previously advised in your prior um, arraignments, but I'm going to. additional charges arose after additional 
evidence took place, again, charging with hindering and making what we think are extraordinary allegations about what state police believe and so forth. We waited for months in anticipation for this warrant, wanting to see whether these beliefs would be produced or supported by fact. And the warrant we read last night offers us perishingly little that differs and advances a new theory of the case. Prior to yesterday, the motive was Mr. Dulos did this to extinguish his wife to end a bitter divorce. Now it's to gain control of the trust fund. The case is actually charged in the alternative. It's either murder or it's felony murder arising out of a kidnapping. As to the strengths of the state's case, I think the state is still groping in the dark, grasping at straws, and it has thrown now a dart at Mr. Dulos, which has landed. He has been fully compliant with your orders and is out or was until yesterday on a $1 million bond. We received information from a credible source that he was about to be arrested. I traveled to his home arriving before the state police and brokered a friendly transaction. It was tense and sorrowful, as you can imagine such a thing would be, but he cooperated even there. Although he has substantial ties to Greece and family, he is known now throughout the world thanks to the publicity in this case, and I suspect 80 percent of the folks in this courtroom are reporters. There's a bank of cameras, the likes of which I've never seen outside the courtroom. This is an extraditable offense. He's going to be on house arrest with GPS and electronic monitoring. I do not believe him to be a flight risk. He has been compliant with your orders. There's been but one dust-up with respect to the electronic order of the electronic monitoring. I believe he crossed state lines at some point in the area of New Bedford. I may be wrong about that town, but upon investigation, probation determined that that was inadvertent on a twisting state route. So we think an additional million-dollar bond is sufficient. I can count on one hand the number of cases in which I've seen a bond larger than that in my career over the last 30 years involving murder, and those were typically for gangbangers or people directing criminal enterprises. The state believes he engineered and caused his wife's death. We don't. We're anxious for the trial. We're relieved by the allegations in the warrant. If that's all the state has, we're confident about trial, and Mr. Dulos has no interest in flight. He has every interest in fighting this case and reclaiming his reputation. So we believe an additional $1 million reflects the seriousness of the offense. That would yield a cumulative bond of $2 million, and so our request is for a $1 million bond. Sir, listen carefully. I'm issuing the following protective order because the nature and circumstances of this murder qualify this as a family violence crime, which allows the court to issue this protective order, and it will remain in effect until further order of the court. So with respect to the protected part... ...whose names I'm not going to read, but whose names and dates of birth are on this order. With respect to all of those parties, you are not to have any contact with those protected parties in any manner. That includes by writing, electronic, or telephone. No texting, no Facebook, no social media. Do not contact their home, workplace, or anyone else with whom contact has caused them annoyance or alarm. You must stay away from the home of the protected parties and wherever they may reside. Do not assault, threaten, abuse, harass, follow, interfere with, or stalk the protected parties. You must not possess any firearms or ammunition. So if you are in possession of any firearms or ammunition under the terms of this protective order, such items have to be surrendered or transferred to the Farming Interstate Police, as the case may be, while this order remains in effect. You must stay 100 yards away from the protected parties. So, do you understand all the different terms of the protective order, sir? I do. Will you obey it? I will. Do you have a copy to the defendant? If you have any questions, please speak to your attorney or talk to family relations. Well, counsel, I'm well aware of your position as to the disappearance of Jennifer Farber Dulos, the mother of your client's five children. Your arguments as to his lack of involvement in Jennifer's disappearance have not changed since his first arrest for evidence tampering last summer. However, what has changed since then is the new charges of murder and kidnapping and related charges which bring him here today. In addition, the quantity of the evidence against the defendant and his exposure to incarceration in the event of a conviction have all gone up substantially. And the nature of the bond is to ensure appearance of court. The amount of the bond 
must also match the gravity of the offenses charged. I, I believe that the bond at six million dollars is appropriate. In the event your client does post that bond, he is to remain under house arrest during the pendency of these proceedings, IPS and GPS monitoring. Um, he has been compliant with his GPS monitoring. Without permission, surrender your passport. Um, the medical appointments, church services, meeting with counsel, and work related um, appointments and visits are permitted under this. But with prior approval, your honor? Prior approval of the supervising probation officer, I believe in your case it's a Mr. Jeffrey Coffey. So that is the court's order. I did speak briefly to counsel. We've agreed upon a new date. So before that, um, yes. I neglected to ask that he also have no contact with the nanny that's been uh, with his children, Lauren Almeida. So if we can make that a condition of his release also, not to have any contact with her. Well, we would object to that insofar as it may apply to us as his agents. She's a witness and we may well reach out to her. They can reach out and she could say, I don't want to talk. Mr. Dulo, Mr. Dulo's not have any contact with her, and that's what I, I'm asking. I understand for. the distinction, I think, that you're fine with us, but yes, Attorney Pattis, I, I'm not trying to prohibit you from my own defense of these charges, but your client is not to have any contact with his children's nanny or home nanny. So ordered. February. Your Honor, we talked about February 28th as a continuance date. Um, I, I spoke to counsel about waiving the HPC. They indicate don't want to waive it or not are not able to do it today. So I'd ask that any continuance be charged to them. And I'd ask that uh, Mr. Dulos's case that was down for the ninth go go on to the, go continue be continued to uh, the February 28th date. Yes, sir. Um, you, as your lawyers undoubtedly advised you, because you're now charged with murder, it does carry a constitutional right to a hearing and probable cause. Um, that has to be held within, I believe, 60 days of, of your arraignment unless there is a request for a continuance which is charging you to either party. I'm not requiring you to make that election today, but because of the charge, probable cause hearing must be held and within the time frame. Is counsel, defense counsel asking for the continuance? We are. All right, so the date of? February 28th. February 28th. In part A, please, Your Honor. In part A. All further proceedings to be in part A in the Stanford Judicial District. That is so weird. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Those are all the matters I have, Your Honor. Any further business to come before the court? No, sir. All right, this court will stand adjourned. All rise. The court stands adjourned. Everyone, please exit the courtroom. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay.